As you know, the Bible is very much a book of redemption. This is the story of redemption, the story of salvation. And God always wants to communicate to all mankind, including you and me, the need that we have for redemption because we are sinner. We need redemption. And how God does that? He does it through giving us uh, small stories, a lot of stories. When you look through the Bible stories, Noah is a, 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 a tremendous a Bible story of redemption. You see that. The prodigal son in the New Testament and so many stories uh, you, you can find. They illustrate the wonderful truth of redemption and it points to Jesus Christ. Everybody, I think, in this room loves a redemption story. Because redemption story, like, uh, are always wonderful and brings hope, you know, whether they are from the, this everyday life. You know, when you hear about a hero rescuing someone, all this. But Jesus Christ is the greatest hero. Jesus Christ is both rescuer and redeemer. And these are two of the divine roles of Jesus Christ that are so important for you and for me. Two roles, rescuer and redeemer. And many times these two uh, roles are connected most of the time. And they are also synonymous of one another. Sometimes we use one, but we could use the other one as well. And it would mean about the same thing. But actually, if you look at these, uh, these two titles, they are also different. They also express a unique and different blessing. We want to uh, look at some uh, illustration of uh, rescue uh, this morning. Uh, not too long ago, um, in France, there's a, a young man from Africa in Mali who uh, entered France without papers. And uh, he came into uh, a street to watch football in a restaurant, and then he saw a baby hanging out of a balcony on the fourth floor. So we have a small video of that, and he went and he climbed and he rescued the baby. That, that, that shot the videos. Of a rescue in Paris, an immigrant from Mali is being called a real life Spider Man after he rescued a child dangling from a balcony. Look at this. You can see Mamudu Gassama, that's his name, scaling four floors, pulling himself up from balcony to balcony until he makes it to the four year old and pulls him to safety from midair. I'll just give you a moment to get to that point. Now, CNN affiliate BFM TV reports that French President Emmanuel Macron has invited him to the Elysee Palace on Monday to thank him personally. So, wow. Can you do that? When you look at a story like that, you can only admire the person who has done that, the courage, he did not hesitate, and the ability to, to rescue that, 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 that baby. The president acknowledged him, the mayor of Paris, the, this lady also praised him for, uh, for his act of courage, and to uh, reward him, he will receive the nationality uh, and the right to, to live in France. So praise the Lord. We love this kind of story, isn't that right? And uh, 2 Corinthians 1.10, we read that Jesus did rescue us from mortal danger. So he is our, our hero. You know, one of the uh, um, words used for the rescue is to rush and draw to oneself uh, to rescue. You, you rush to and you grab and you bring to, to safety to yourself. You know, when I was a youth director many years ago, because before I came to Hong Kong, we used this. We had this uh, program for the churches in the summertime. And the young people uh, from enter church uh, all over the, the province of Quebec. We would uh, recruit them and send them to remote places to uh, work with some small uh, church that are just being planted in some place so that he could help, uh, you know, bring some encouragement and work and at the same time grow in the, as, as disciple of Jesus Christ. And I remember we, we sent many of them and two of our young ladies in our church went to this very remote church. There's a lot of forest in our place, you know, and everything. So as they arrived there, they took a walk in the forest in the afternoon. 
and they got lost in the forest. And they ended up spending the whole night scared in the forest, in the dark forest, both of them lost in the forest. It was cold, they were uh, freezing, and uh, they were uh, stuck there. They could only be rescued the next day with the rescue team and the police and the dogs went after them, and then finally they rescued them. So these are, uh, you know, uh, expressions of to be rescued. They spent a night in the forest on their own. They were afraid, they were scared, all this. You know, maybe you don't know this, but uh, you know, I also one time walked on the water, just like that. Maybe you don't believe me, but I will tell you the story how it happened. It was winter, and the water was frozen. <laughs> And I was walking with my friends on the, on the, on the pond, and uh, I was about seven to nine years old. You didn't know I could do these amazing things. And then, so I was about seven, nine years old with my friends, and we did something that was foolish and dangerous. The ice was cracking, and my friends were trying to move the ice. And of course, every time I try something like that, I'm the one who went down. So the ice broke, and I went under, in winter, under the ice. And I could have really have died on that day as a little boy. But my friend took a branch, a tree branch, and he just went under the, the ice, and then I grabbed that, and then he pulled me out. And then after that, I ran home, which was quite far because we were somewhere we were not supposed to be. And uh, <laughs> had water my, splashing out of my boots and all my, you know, I, I went under and winter and all this. And I was, I was saved. I was saved on that day. When a firefighter risks his life to save a life uh, from a building in flames, we praise people like that, you know. But the Bible says in Jude 1.23, to rescue someone from eternal burning is far greater than to rescue someone from a building in flames. Jude 1.23, rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. And that is what it is all about. This is wh why you have been rescued just from that. You have been rescued by this amazing Savior, this rescuer of your life. You have been snatched out of the consequence of your sin that would lead you to the judgment of fire. Amen? That is what Jesus has done for you. And as soon as you are being rescued, you become part of the rescue team. You are be being uh, a team up with others in the church, and you are being trained, and you become a rescuer. You, you bring that message, and you point out uh, to Jesus. That is really important. Who need rescue? Who need rescue? Do you know anybody who doesn't need rescue? Maybe that's an easier question to ask. Everybody needs rescue. Everybody needs rescue. Every human being absolutely needs a rescuer, a savior, to be saved from the danger and the eternal consequence of sin. That's why Lighthouse exists. That's why every church should exist for. Once you are rescued, you are called to join the rescue team. Parents, if you have children, your children need rescue. You know, these nice little children that you love so much, you know, that whatever you want them to succeed, to be educated, and to have happiness and their social life and everything. But there's something so much more important is the rescue of their soul. It's more important than education and everything. There's another word also in the Bible that is called redeem, also that is really important for us because, as I said, these two words are often synonymous. But redeem have uh, three words, at least three words in the Bible, which are translated redeem. The first one, I think we, we know some of it, I would, it would be a review for most of you. The first word for uh, redeem is to buy or purchase. Is to uh, really to purchase of a, the purchase of a slave. We know that in the market slave, this comes from the New Testament and the Old Testament. He is bought to be owned as a property. You buy a slave, 
this slave become your property. It was not your property, you purchase it. This slave becomes your slave, your property. So it's a question of a new identity. Uh, you have an owner. And Christ Jesus redeemed us in this sense so that we belong to him. What's your identity? Where do you belong? You belong to Jesus Christ because he redeemed you. He paid a, a right to, to buy you for himself. You belong to him. Another word, the second word, means to buy something from something for another purpose. You buy something from something or someone for another purpose. And again, that is what Christ Jesus has done from purchasing us from the bondage of sin and to give you a new purpose free from sin. So you are free from sin now. You have been purchased out of that. And now you have a, a new purpose. You have been purchased for something that has more value, something far more better than what you existed for before. That's a, that's a red redemption. You have been purchased, y you had a purpose, and now your purpose is so much better than the one you had before. And the third one carries the idea of paying of a debt. Someone has a debt, you have a debt, and then you end up paying this debt. You know, so many people in modern business uh, time now, they, g they declare bankruptcy. And many bankruptcy are dishonest uh, uh, bus business practice. This is really dishonest because, uh, y you know, y you invested, you got money, and now uh, you just go into bankruptcy so that you don't have to pay back your debt. Then you run away from with the money and the property. Or yet yeah, there's all sorts of uh, things that you can do for that. But uh, to pay a debt, if you cannot pay your own debt, uh, someone else can pay your debt. Sometimes people you can borrow at the bank to pay a, a debt or something it's because your reputation will be saved. But it's a price that is necessary to secure the freedom uh, that, uh, for you. Christ paid your debt by a ransom that he paid with his own blood for you. So when someone, you receive Jesus, you are not only saved from sin, but you are blessed also with a process or a miracle of redemption. There's a change that will take place, a profound change in your life. And the slide number three will tell us here, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are saved, now something is finished, Jesus has done it for you. Something begins that is wonderful. And this redeeming transformation begins when we are born again. And the Old Testament, I like how Ezekiel referred to this, this redemption by calling it a rebirth and calling it receiving a new heart and a new spirit. If you look at Ezekiel 36 here, and I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. That's what we need, that's what you need. I will take out your stony or your hardened, stubborn heart and give you a tender heart of flesh, a responsive heart. I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees there will be an ability to do that. Otherwise, it's not possible to do it. So the redemption that Jesus Christ accomplished in your life brings a deep, deep uh, transformation and change in, in your life. And this is only possible by the supernatural action. You receive a new heart and you receive a new spirit. If you don't, there's not this change. You cannot by willpower change that. You cannot break the power of sin. You cannot walk out from that. You can try. Many people try. You can try religion. You can try a lot of things, but you cannot. Talk to any addict and you will see how difficult it is to break something. So being saved or being rescued is only the start of something wonderful that Christ has for your life. He wants to do. He desires you to become his masterpiece. So Jesus Christ wants you to be saved and he wants you to be redeemed because these are two connected uh, roles that he will perform into your life. Go to slide number two. 
Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. This is a wonderful uh, scriptures that will bring all of this together. He rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us safe into the kingdom of his dear son who redeemed us or who purchased us our freedom with his blood and forgive our sin. This is wonderful because in that verse you see both, both terminology put together and it shows the complete work of Christ. He has rescued us. He has brought us into safety. We have been transferred. We, he brought us safe in a safe place and he purchased our freedom and he forgave our sin. So that's the complete package that you have in two of uh, the scriptures here. The Savior, Rescuer, save you from a power, from a domin dom dominion, a dominion of darkness, a dominion of sinfulness, where you cannot break free from that. You need a rescuer like this young man who climb and take this child and bring you to, to safety. You, you need this action to be rescued. And then you need the, the Redeemer to, to deal with the conditions you are in, to pay a ransom and the, the debt of your sin, and to make you better than you were before. That's the whole idea of that. There's a change. There's a usefulness. There's a, there's a growing. There's something that you are called to become and to do. And, this, and He is able to make you holy and make you new. That's what He does. If you go to slide number four, you will see a, a comparison of the two uh, terminology, the rescued, save, and, and the redeem. And if you look quickly on that, one is mainly to be free from prison, violence, danger, evil. It's to be brought into safety, make safe from loss, hurt, distress, danger, uh, destructions, set free from the consequence of the danger you were in. And someone who is coming to, to aid you, to, to help you, to, to rescue you from, you could not do it by yourself. On the other side, you have redeem, is there's a, a repurchase, a makeup for, uh, there's a, a freedom from captivity, but the, it necessitates uh, a payment of a ransom. And you see a difference. And then a little bit uh, here uh, below, you see a repair, a restore, a reform to change for the better. So both of them are, are necessary for, for us, and Jesus Christ does it for us. This transforming miracle is impossible to be done on our own ability or by our will. I'm going to change myself. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to become like this, free of that, and I'm going to accomplish this. It's not possible. It's absolutely not possible. It takes the power of God in our lives. S to be saved, the expression to be saved, many times uh, in our mind it means the particular time, uh, the day where you said yes to Jesus Christ and you ex c confess Jesus to be your Lord, you receive Jesus into your life. But it's only the beginning of that. I want uh, us to look at uh, one, one story, uh, the story of Peter. The, 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 the picture that we have seen. Go to slide number six because I want to go to the, the place here. If you look at that part of the story, we will come back to the story. I want you to focus on that part because we are talking about the, the rescuer. When he saw, verse 30, when he saw the strong wind and the waves, that's Peter, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and grabbed him. That's the, 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 the picture that you have and that incredible story that you, you see in picture here. There's, there's the wind. There's the danger. There's the night. There's Peter seeing Jesus walking on the water and who asked to, to go to, to, to meet with uh, Jesus. That's a wonderful story. We f find Peter sinking. Uh, we find his courage. He asked the Lord first, Lord, if it is you, prove it to me. Allow me to walk on the water to go and meet you. And Jesus allows him, and he obeyed, and he walked. And many times you look at this story, and this story is all about that moment of uh, Peter 
walking on the uh, you know walking on the water here uh, toward Jesus stepping over the side of the boat this story is all about that but there's more to that story than that it's good to slide number five and we will look a little bit at the at the context of that before we read what when did this story take place it's immediately after the multiplication of the bread and the fish to the 5,000 men. So that's what just took place. People are thinking of crowning Jesus Christ as their king, like a King David, like a, someone that will uh, set us free from the rule of the Roman Empire, or something like that. And Jesus wanted to go away. And you can look for the parallel text of that story in Mark and Luke. You will see different uh, notions of that. Jesus wanted to go away from that. So he, he stayed by himself to pray and he sent his apostle away. He insisted that the disciples get back in the boat and cross on the other side of the lake. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Jesus was praying alone. Uh, then we read in that story, verse 24, Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had arisen, and they were fighting heavy waves. So it's not like really a storm, but it's, it's, a, rough, it's a rough sea, and the winds are contrary, and you, you rule, as, as I describe, uh, describe in my little uh, adventure before. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them. Jesus was praying. Jesus saw them, not, at, not with visual eyes, but in prayer. And that tells us something about Jesus. He knew what they were fighting for. And then he walked on the water toward, toward them. And then when they saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. And in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. You remember a, a similar story, in the, I think it's in chapter 8 where the, Jesus was in the boat, there was a storm, they were in danger, but uh, Jesus was sleeping in the boat at that time, but they were afraid of drowning and sinking, and the other story. But in that story here, they are not afraid of sinking, they are afraid of a ghost. They are afraid of when they saw Jesus, not, not afraid. Their life was not really in danger. It was just hard. It was just hard for them to, to reach their destination. So they cr cried out. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he says. Take courage. I am here. I, this is me. I am here. Don't, don't be afraid. Then that's the story. We look at the next slide. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus says. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. And when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and he began to sing, Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out and grab. So he was not very far because says immediately he grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus says. Why did you doubt me? And when they climbed back in the boat. So anyway, that's a wonderful story that we want to learn something. Peter is such a good illustration of all of us. He's such a human being just like we are. How many times in your, uh, in your life since you began following Jesus, have you needed Jesus to rescue you? You know, even, even though you were, you were already saved, like the rescue of, of your sin, you belong to Jesus, but how many times did you end up in uh, situations where you needed uh, extraordinary help, like a rescuer to come to you and do something extraordinary? Maybe so many times that you cannot tell all the, the time, you know? So that's really wonderful. Peter in that story was not really putting Jesus to a test. That's not what he was trying to do. Um, instead, he was the only one in the boat that, uh, you know, had this uh, uh, strong, impulsive request in, in his heart. He wanted that. So it's easy for us many times to judge uh, Peter in situations like this while we are comfortably sitting here in Lighthouse this morning and judge Peter for his lack of faith and stu stuff like that. 
but instead see him like uh, and his zeal maybe it's a wrong kind of zeal but nevertheless it's a zeal that he wants to experience something supernatural he wants to experience the life he, he wants to go to G to jesus he wants to if jesus can do it i want to do it too so there's a something and uh, there's an unusual demonstration of god's power because remember that he stepped out of the boat and for a while he walked on the water he did walk on the water not frozen lake like me he did walk in the water for a while but then he, he, he sank when he took his eyes off Jesus and uh, was, you know, caught by the, what happened about. His faith wavered. So maybe you will not walk on the water. How would you like to give it a try to walk on the water? But all of us, we will walk through very tough situations. And if you focus on the difficult circumstance of your life, you will miss the power of God in your life. You will you will not see Jesus and you will be afraid but you need to cry out to Jesus you know to maintain your faith when situations are difficult you need to focus on Jesus but I want to enlarge the context of that story a little bit because at first I want us to look at Jesus more than we look at Peter because I, in fact that story could be told without the, the, the most important truth of that story could be told without Peter. Uh, this, this little adventure out of the boat, th that story could be told without Peter and the point of the story will remain the same. The point of the story is not Peter. The main target of that story is not Peter. Because the two other evangelists do not mention Peter but they recall the same story, but Peter is not mentioned. Only in this one here in Matthew, we hear about Peter. So if Peter was the point of the story, he would be mentioned in all of the account, but not in all the account, only one on three. So, but the, the main point of this text here is Jesus. What, where was he? Look at Jesus. What does he do? What does he say? And why did he allow this whole situation to occur? That's the main point. Jesus was praying by himself. He knew what they were experiencing in that boat. He cared for them. He walked with them, toward them. He walked on the water. Let's pause here for a moment. Jesus walked on the water. Stop for a moment. Do you know anybody else walking on the water? Ever? In this life or in the Bible? Have you seen anybody else walking on the water? No. So that tells us something. Let's stop. Don't look at Peter. Look at Jesus. If Peter walked a little bit on the water or stood on the water, it's not of his own power. It's because he asked Jesus and Jesus allowed him, which is double manifestation of, of power. First of all, Jesus can walk on the water. That shows us something about who he is. And Jesus can allow Peter to walk on the water at his command. That tells us something else about Jesus as well and something that you can apply to your, to your own life. Amen? Amen? Another thing that you need to realize that Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and he grabbed him. Uh, I, I mean, he, he caught, he overtook him and he rescued him. So now think for a moment about Jesus. You know, in many movies or you look at the crucifix, you see this skinny little man Jesus that looks so weak, so feminine and so, you know, you, that, that's the picture that you often have uh, of Jesus. But if you look at that story here, I want you to observe the strength of Jesus, the boldness of Jesus, the, the ability, the power, the strength of Jesus. Immediately, he grabbed him and he lift him. Can you lift a man just by an arm, just like that? Anybody here in this room, you are very strong. Me, I cannot do it. 
Can you do it, Brother Stephen? No. Brother XP, you're very strong, I think. You can carry a big base when you go to work. Can you lift a man just like that? No. But Jesus took Peter immediately and he caught him up. That's power. That's human power. And that's divine power. And in that actions, you can see the assurance of Jesus Christ. You can see the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You can see the closeness of Jesus Christ to his Peter and to his disciple. You can see the, the power that Jesus has over nature, over the wave, over the wind. He can do that. Jesus can do that. Say amen to that. Amen. That's your rescuer that can do that. Amen? We have heard many, many uh, sermon about this text here. But I, I've looked at many texts and many pictures on Google picture yesterday and this. It's all about Peter. It's not about Jesus. Everybody talks about Peter. You have heard sermon about get out of the boat. Do this or that. Let me ask you an honest question about, just very honest, based on observation. Peter is stepping out of the boat. Has it fulfilled anything useful? Has it achieved a mission? Has it a, 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 a usefulness? Has it done something? Really. And the purpose of salvation and the purpose of mission and the purpose of evangelism. As the actions of Peter stepping out of the boat accomplish anything at all? Not really, isn't it? Not really. But Jesus is showing us something. So the, 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 when we look at this story, we're all amazed at Peter because maybe we admire him in a way because we would not have dared to step out of the boat. Okay, we have heard that. But there's so many sermons that base all the sermons and all the truths based on that one action that actually accomplished nothing. But just this boldness or this, was it boldness? Was it stupidity? Was it like whatever it is? It's, it didn't lead to anything because he was sinking and Jesus needed to intervene again. I think Jesus is so gracious, he allowed Peter to experience something, not so that it would accomplish something, but that he would learn uh, his need of Jesus, maybe basically something like that. So Jesus is there to save him. So, but we look at Peter and we all praise Peter and, and everything. And he needs, he needs some praise. But uh, doing that, we, we missed the point of the story because when Peter came back in the boat, uh, did the other disciple congratulate Peter? Hey, Peter, wow, super, Peter, you did it, yeah, wow. Uh, did you see that in that story? No. You, don't, you don't see them congratulate Peter, okay? Oh, don't worry, Peter, better luck next time. You know, you do it again and it will work better next time, you know? No, it, it did not. It only uh, reinforced uh, maybe a personal experience. It's good to have personal, supernatural personal experience in, in, in life sometimes. But that's not the point of the story. The real hero of that story is Jesus. And he's the only uh, hero of that story. This, as I said, this story could be told without Peter. And Jesus would still remain the same hero because he still would have walked on the water and he still would have led them to, to come. They cried out, Lord, save us. Actually, I don't think that you and I, we are intended to walk on the water. That's not what we are called uh, to do. But when, if we end up caught in situation like this and we feel like we are sinking, we can shout to Jesus, Lord, save us, and he will. So Jesus demonstrates that he is the Lord of the wind, the waves, the water, the sea, and he is the Lord of all the event in our life. And both stories of Jesus and the boat and the storm, Jesus end up in the boat with his disciples. You know, a, a boat, a fishing boat, is not a static uh, something. It's something that l takes you somewhere. And it is a, um, really a picture of us today. The boat is you and I in Lighthouse, and Lighthouse is the boat. We are going somewhere. 
we are being with Jesus going somewhere because the the main question is like why did Jesus uh, send them across the sea that's the that's the main purpose the question to ask there's a story what's the purpose of that story what's the point it's not Peter at the point Jesus insisted get in the boat and go on the other side why because on the other side they are going to preach they are going to lead them. They are going, Jesus is going to be the rescuer and the redeemer of, of these people. So that's the point. So you and I, we are in the boat. And we are in a journey. And we are being trained. And we are part of a rescue team. And we are going to another destination sent uh, by the Lord with our brothers and sisters. And we are bringing the message of rescue and redemption to someone else. That's the point of this, the story. We have to ask another question in that story. Why did they not recognize Jesus? It's Jesus. Why did they not recognize Jesus? It's because they were not looking for Jesus. They were not expecting Jesus. They were on their own. And sometimes it's like that also in our own life. When you are not expecting Jesus to show up in your situation, and Jesus would want to show up, you cannot recognize him. So you will end up being on your own, not expecting him. Fear and faith cannot live in the same heart. We need to have faith and not fear in our heart, because it will blind our, our eyes. Go to the last slide, slide number seven, and that's the point of the story. When they climbed back in the boat, the wind stopped, because Jesus made it stop. Then the disciple, what did they do? They worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. And then they crossed the lake and they reached their destination. Did you know that this, is the, this story is the first time that they call Jesus the Son of God? That Jesus was called the Son of God by the disciple? This is the first time. Did you know that this is the first time in the, the, the gospel that they worship Jesus? It's the first time. So this is significant. You know, they, they, they are growing in faith. They still have a long way to go. So, okay, let's close with your own story. How have you been rescued by Jesus? Do you remember? What were you rescued from? Certainly sin or some form of sins. Ad maybe addiction for some or bad habits depression, disease, or another form of, uh, uh, that we need rescue sometimes is self-righteousness. For the people who think they are good enough, they are religious, they, they, are, they are sometimes the most, danger, the most uh, difficult to rescue because they think they're okay. So self-righteousness is also like this. Who need rescue that you know that you can reach out to? Because now you have been called to be part of the rescue team of Jesus Christ. You're on God's search and rescue team. And our Christian life is like maybe sometimes walking on the water. It is not possible. But our Christian life can only be lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. With a new heart and with a new spirit. And that is the work of the Redeemer in our heart. And if we look not to Jesus, we'll end up in trouble, sinking. And when all of our spiritual life is a supernatural life. If we miss that, then we miss everything. I want you to remember Global Outreach Day. We have done something to reach out to people. Richard Sharp last week really asked us to step out of the box and to go and reach out to others. And on July 8th, we're going again to have something to, uh, like a tool or a means by which you can reach out to someone, inviting someone, doing something you've never done. If you want to step out the boat, start a Bible study in your home. Show the movie to someone, your friend. Do something you have not done before. Get out of your boat with Jesus and, and do something with, with that. 
Jesus is a rescuer, he's a redeemer, and you are part of his rescue team. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand.